Hello friends, welcome back, hope you're doing well. And uh, today I'm in Luminar Neo. I'm taking a look at a waterfall photo that I shot in Iceland recently. And um, I thought what I'd do is walk through not just the workflow, but also talk about the things that I think about when I'm editing a waterfall photo. Because um, unlike some landscapes, you know, when you shoot these vast grand landscapes, sometimes it's it's like, what's the subject? The subject is the landscape. And you're like, look, it's so pretty, right? If you can find an anchoring element in the foreground, for example, that's great to kind of anchor the composition with waterfalls like you're shooting the waterfall that's the subject and the landscape around it or whatever else is around it is kind of like a supporting role for like a, a better description let me just get into it this is the image in a question now it started life like that it had some spots in it if you look in the upper left hand side which is up right over here you'll see some people I took the spots out I took the people out and I did a little bit in raw develop just to add a little bit of contrast pulled on the highlights a little bit it's a little bit brighter in the sky of course and of course I I raised the shadows. I've done nothing else to it. And what I want to do is go about trying to draw attention to the waterfalls. I mean, it's clearly the subject of the photo, but how do you make a subject stand out? Well, it's got to be brighter or more colorful or more detailed. It's light, detail, and color. Those are the things that I think about when I'm editing really any photo. And for a, uh, a waterfall shot like this, those are the things I'm thinking about as well. Let me show you how I go about sort of achieving that. I did a little bit in raw develop, but then I'm going to go straight into super contrast, which I highly recommend as a tool to use pretty much after I use develop. I just use this all the time because it's really good at balancing the light and I tend to prefer to get the light right before I go do really anything else in the photo. Doesn't mean I don't come back and touch up the light later because I do, but if I can get a, a really good base photo or feel uh, for the image, um, I, it just sets me on, on a better path, right? So do that work up front and get your light kind of balanced or, or I, I use the word balance. It might be just rearranging the lights some things like that but super contrast can help let me show you that's what it was like before and that's what it's like now honestly not a big uh, big difference and so what I want to do is go into relight AI because uh, that's a pretty interesting tool I don't use it a lot but I wanted to use it here because it does some things for me uh, I want to darken the sky uh, or the top part of the photo the top third but I want to brighten the bottom two-thirds of the photo I'm rearranging the light like I said well relight AI is a good way to do that so brightness near I pull that up to like nearly uh, 70 uh, and brightness far I'm pulling that down uh, like a negative 35 six seven something like that the, the depth however I'm gonna go really high in the depth and so what that does is that moves where the difference between near and far is it moves it further and further up the photo so I'm going to I gotta look at my notes I'm going to 89 and you will see as I do that basically happening is the foreground's getting brighter because brightness near is high and the background is getting darker in that background uh, what's considered background is shrinking because um, I've increased the depth so much. So I've pushed the brightness near higher and higher into the photo. Therefore, the brightness far, which is a reduction in light, is shrinking. So basically, it's a way to get uh, one part of the photo darker and one part of the photo brighter and adjust how those parts sort of intermingle, for lack of a better word. So if you look at the before, this is the obvious way to demonstrate what I just did. The sky is quite a bit brighter as skies are, and the foreground is quite a bit darker as foregrounds are. And now it's kind of flopped right? I've basically flopped it around with one tool because otherwise you'd have to go use two tools. You'd have to go use develop with like a linear gradient and then use develop again with a linear gradient. This gets me out of having to do that. So now that I've done that, the other thing I want to do is actually use structure AI. And if you've been here before, you've seen me in a lot of videos where I'll go negative on uh, water to smooth it out and create kind of a smooth flow. I'm not going to do that today. I'm actually going to apply this reasonably high, like 38 or 39 across the entire image, which is not what I normally do. Do, but I sometimes make exceptions for waterfall. And that's because if you look at it, there's already some structure in that waterfall. It's not, it's smooth from the standpoint of it's flowing and this is like a half a second or, or whatever it was exposure, but it's got some like texture. It's it's not just silky smooth. It's smooth with texture. I don't know if that makes sense. I think you know what I mean. You can see like the stri striations, the lines in the waterfall. I don't want to lose all that. I don't want to smooth it out. I want it to accentuate it. And structure actually does some of that. So if you look at the water, Falls. There it is before, and there it is now. And this has the added benefit of giving me a little bit of crunch in the rocks, which I like to add crunch or structure AI. I like to add that kind of crunchy feel to natural things like rocks and ground. It just fits. And also it brightens those areas a little bit. So it's giving me a little bit better visibility into that center, like the center half of the photo. Like there's a quarter at the top that I don't care a whole lot about, and maybe a quarter at the bottom pool of water that I don't care a whole lot about, but I care a whole lot about the half 
half or maybe you know uh, two thirds or whatever that's in the center. And that structure AI, I think accentuated that quite a bit. So I think that's looking good. Now, one of the other things that I like to play with, of course, is color and color will draw the eye, right? And so I'm gonna come in here and I actually go fairly high on vibrance, like a high 30s, like 37 or something. And you will see what happens to the waterfalls is they kind of turn in blue because they have a bit of a blue look to them already. There it is before and there it is after. And I did not make any temperature adjustments uh, in uh, Develop Raw. I left it the way it was. When you add contrast and you add vibrance and things like that, it impacts color and you end up with kind of bluish waterfalls. We're gonna fix that. Uh, but we're also gonna do some other things. And that's because if you look at the grasses, the waterfalls are, are blue. They're not going to be, but there's a fair amount of blue in the scene, but there's a lot of green and greenish kind of yellow, but more green to me in the grasses. And that's not enough what I call color contrast. I'm looking for something that's a little bit more opposite of the blue, which is going to be more of the yellow kind of orange uh, because it's more complementary. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the various hue sliders here and just make some adjustments in order to shift the hues of those greens and yellows to get them looking a little bit more kind of yellowy orange instead of uh, more like green yellow, if, if that makes sense. Uh, and so if you shift the hues, uh, move that around, you'll see that those hues are changing, right? So if you look at the before, it's more greenish, and now it's more orange, which is kind of the look I'm going for. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go into the saturation, and I'm going to take that blue down because it's just way too much, and I don't want really blue water. So taking it down by 25, I think, looks good. So HSL in the color tool has taken me from that to that. You can see, in fact, I might pull that down just a little bit more even, but the waterfalls... Uh, uh, look basically about the same, but I've changed uh, all the color in the in the rock and grass there behind it so or next to it. So there it is before and there it is now. I like where we are and I've got a few more tools I'm going to play with to really amp up the final look. The first one is mystical, which I just love and I'm going to go to about 50, but um, I'm going to lift shadows because it does create a bit of shadow and if you don't lift the shadows, you end up with a bit of a darker image. But mystical does a really good job. Of, uh, it adds contrast, which is nice to have that shadow slider so I can lift those if I need to but it, it, it adds kind of a moodiness and for me like this is an Icelandic waterfall and it's just it's just moody uh, and I just want to accentuate that a bit so mystical is a good tool for that for adding a little bit of uh, in interest and, and mood and there it is before mystical and there it is now you'll also notice that um, it kind of brightens up some of the water which plays into what I'm trying to do which is I want to focus the uh, viewers attention on the waterfall because that's clearly the focus of the image okay and then I just have two little moves that are going to help me really wrap this up. The first one here is actually very targeted on the waterfalls. I'm going to get a brush and I'm going to come in and what I want to do, and I'm going to go full strength and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to paint my uh, my brush over the waterfalls and the water where it's basically white. And so let me go ahead and do that and then I'll show you what moves I'm going to make. Okay, so my mask looks a bit like that and I used a brush because if I used water or something like that in the mask AI tool, it would pick up all that foreground and then I'd have to erase it because I don't want that impacted at all. I really just want the waterfall. And in fact, I got a little bit more here I could use. And let me add that to my mask. And I left the stuff on that far left side out of it because I don't really care a whole lot about that. But what I want to do is go in and make some adjustments because what I want to do is just draw attention to this. So I need to raise the exposure a little bit. And this is a good time to activate the J key. So a J key, when you activate that, it'll turn on these two little dots here in your histogram. And that will basically, um, when they're on, what happens is anything that's completely blown out, like completely white, will light up in red, and anything that's completely black uh, will light up in blue. I don't really see either in the photo, but because I'm coming in and some of that waterfall, like right over here, is already pretty bright, uh, bright. I just want to be careful with that. So um, having said that, I'm going to adjust the whites as well. I'm going to bump those up. And this is a season to taste kind of thing, my friends. Like if I go really high, that's, that's the red that I'm talking about. What's often a good plan is to go right right to the edge of where you start getting red, like I'm starting to get red there, maybe pull that back a little bit. Um, it still looks a little bit hot to me. You may uh, wanna come in and adjust the highlights a little bit. And so it's just a dance between exposure highlights and whites for me to get what I want. But you can see I brighten that area quite a bit, which, hey, guess what? If it's brighter, you're gonna draw the viewer's eye to it, right? Which is really what I'm trying to do. And while I'm at it, I'm gonna take the saturation down. Remember the blue that we had? I'm gonna pull the saturation down, which is what's so 
great about using the develop tool to do this instead of using like dodge and burn because you might need to do other stuff and most of the other stuff you need to do is probably already in develop. You get a lot of power and control by having that right all there in one place. Let me show you the before and after for this develop instance. That was a very, very big difference. That's what the waterfalls look like and now they look like that. That might, might actually be a little too much but uh, you get the point, right? So just season to taste. I might need to refine this a little bit but the bottom line is the waterfalls, it was not quite obvious obvious that they were just ripping and coming over these uh, these rocks and just looking awesome, probably pretty clearly the subject of the photo. They didn't stand out and you want your subject to stand out. And I think now they stand out quite a bit. In fact, I'm going to pull pull up a little bit more on that exposure. I like that. I think that looks good. The only other thing I want to do, I'm going to close develop. I'm a little bit, not a little bit, I'm, I'm reasonably highly disinterested in that bottom strip of water in the pool there. I don't care. I just don't care. Um, and I don't want you to kind of get lost in it because there's a lot of flowing water and patterns and all that. So once again, we're going to go to develop. This time I'm going to get a linear gradient and I'm going to drag that just right up in here, something about like that. And I'm going to have it just overlap slightly uh, the, uh, the the white part of that flowing water. So maybe about like that. And then I'm going to go into adjustments and all I'm going to do is drop that exposure. And I'm going to drop it a pretty good amount, like a stop and a half or, you know, whatever, something about like that, because I don't care, like I said. And when I'm trying to draw attention to the waterfall, I want you to see the waterfall and focus on it. I don't want you spending time flopping around in the pool in the front because nobody cares. Uh, having said that, I like the move there. That's a significant change. I actually might go try it. I didn't have this in my initial plan, but I actually might come back with a linear gradient and do a similar thing on the top. Even though the top is already darker, if I could get a hold of this thing, my uh, microphone's a little bit in the way, but let me adjust this, tilt it a little bit, maybe move it like that, maybe spread that out a little bit, uh, maybe something like that. Let's just try this. And, you know, again, I don't really care a whole lot about what's going on up there in the sky. I can darken that sky and really pull your eye into that center part of the photo. And once again, I'm going to pull the saturation down because there's a fair amount of blue up there and I don't really want to have an overly blue sky. Color attracts the eye too. And so people would be maybe naturally looking up there and saying, hey, that's interesting. That's blue or whatever. Whereas now I think, um, I think that's actually better with having done that. So there it is before and there it is now. And while I'm at it, I might just pull down the highlights because that's going to darken that right hand side of the sky. And I'm going to try the whites as well because those are highlights and whites over there. So maybe that's a little too much. Maybe I need to add back just a little bit of exposure, but something about like that. Yeah, there's before and there's now. Sometimes you just add stuff on the fly, my friends. I didn't have that planned, but I think it helps the photo. Let me show you where we started. That's what the photo looked like. Much brighter in the sky as is uh, as is normal. Much darker in the foreground, also, also normal. People are in the way, some spots in the water fall in the sky, did all that, move the water, or excuse me, move the light around to accentuate the water, darken the foreground, brighten the waterfalls significantly, added structure to the waterfalls and all the uh, land mass, actually added structure to the entire photo, controlled the colors, adjusted the hues in the grasses and stuff like that, and then uh, did some more light work and ended up with a much different photo, frankly. So it started like that and it ended like that. That's how I got there. And so that's kind of how I think about waterfalls is how I go about editing them. Those are some of the tips and tricks that I use to really draw the viewer in, create attention around the waterfall because it is a subject. I think it's pretty clear and I might need to refine this a little bit. I feel like it may be a little bit too bright in the waterfall, but that's how I go about doing it. Hopefully it gives you some ideas that you can implement in your own photos of waterfalls. And uh, thanks for watching my friends. I appreciate it. I'll be back really soon. You guys take care and until then, adios.